Photoshop is the most popular photo editing software by a large margin. Unfortunately, it's owned by Adobe who are not artist friendly. I'm sure you already know about their saga with their new terms, which say they can basically claim all your work as long as you're using Photoshop. So a lot of artists are trying to find new alternatives. Most of them are going for the second most popular photo editing software and that is Affinity Photo. So I had to try it. And lucky for us, as Adobe is losing more artists by the day, Affinity is rubbing more salt in their wound by giving away their products for free for at least six months. So if you want to try Affinity right now, you can get a free try for six months. Something I've never seen any other company do. And most importantly, if you want to buy Affinity after the try, you can get it at a 50% discount. And remember, Affinity products are non subscription based. You pay once and own forever. To compare Photoshop and Affinity, we have to start with their pricing. There is a free trial for Photoshop, but that is only for 30 days, while Affinity is six months, have we already seen. But Photoshop is at $22 per month, and that is 23 times 12. That is $276. That's quite a lot. Now, with Affinity, you can get it for $82, that's including Affinity Designer, which is basically Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Photo, which is Photoshop, and Affinity Publisher, which is basically, I think, Adobe InDesign, all at a price of $82. This is not monthly, this is a one-time payment, meaning you're buying this and owning it forever. It's not a subscription based like Photoshop. Another thing you have to note, if you buy the monthly subscription of Photoshop and try to cancel, you're going to be charged a cancellation fee that is something like four times higher than Affinity products. If you just want to get Affinity Photo, you can get it at $34 for desktop and $9 for iPad. Now let's take a look at Affinity Photo and see how it compares to Photoshop. This really looks like Photoshop and the only difference is that the icons are colored, but you can also change that if you want by just going under edit settings user interface and change the icon style to mono this will remove the color making the application look more like photoshop i prefer the colored ones it makes it easy for me to find them basically all the settings you want for your interface are going to be here your shortcuts are also here if you want to take a look at them but let's take a look at how this actually works affinity comes with free stock images that you can use you can go under window and find the stock panel activated and you should have it somewhere here. If you don't see a panel you're looking for, you can just find it under window, or you can go under studio and reset your studio. This will reset your interface to default. So let's uh, go back to stock. Now we can search our stock from here. You can use the, the pixels library or the Pixabay library. Let's go to pixels and just find search for a car, hit enter and it will search. Let's go with, the, with this, I'll just, Click on that, understand, drag this into the viewport and it will download and place it in my viewport. I already started with a document, but if you don't have an, any document, let's close this out. You can go on a file, new, and you'll see the different presets you can start with. I'm going to start with the 1920 by 1080, but all your presets are under here. You can go for a photo, web, devices. But I usually like to go for web and you can see what I have. If you want to zoom in, you can hold on control and use your middle mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Or you can use the navigator here. It takes up a lot of space and uh, I don't find it very useful. So I'll just close that out. I can just remove it like that. I don't care for the transform or the history. So I can also just close this group. You see, I also have my layers, channels, brushes. Basically, panels you find in Photoshop. Let's bring in a photo to edit. Now I can go to the layers and select the image. Select my move tool and select the image. And I can now just drag this to scale this down. You can hold down shift to change the aspect ratio or let go to just scale uniformly. Uh, if you look at the tools menu, you see that most of the tools here are similar to what you see in Photoshop. There is the select brush, uh, there is the flood tool, which is basically the magic wand in Photoshop. You can hold on control while selecting to add to your selections. And you can also go into the refine to refine your selection. You can play with the border width, small thing, feather, ramp. You can choose what to make this. You can change it into a, 
a foreground mask so i can select whether it's a new mask new layer or new new layer with a mask so let me use that apply and you can see now i have a new layer with a new mask i can go to the text tool and just type in f adobe confirm and just scale this up go up here select a better font scale this up maybe let me just all your font settings are up here like the font size uh, the style and the spacing you can give this a uh, white color and if you're looking for styles you just go under here you'll find layer effects so if you click on that you get your styles in photoshop you usually double click the layer to open this up but with this you find the layer effects down here so you just click on that and you can add an inner shadow and uh, let's bring that offset up opacity there is inner glow 3d this is like a bevel basically the same styles you normally see in photoshop you even have a color overlay and gradient if you have effects on your layer you can double click on the fx icon to open the effects layer as well let's push this text behind our car i'm going to create a mask using the pen tool so i'm just going to select the pen tool and start drawing and if i hide this i'm just going to start drawing a mask up here in the tools settings you can see we have a selection option and a mask option so i can click this to turn it into a mask but i want this to be inverted so i'll go to the curve tool to the pen tool and change this from the pen tool to the node tool so that i can edit these curves so i'll select the curve and just move these points up to invert the curve and you can see now our text is behind uh, the car the purpose of this video was just to show you how similar affinity is to adobe photoshop basically what you can do in photoshop can be done in affinity they have similar tools similar workflows with layers masks layer styles and some features that photoshop may not have yeah thanks for watching see you in the next video